Welcome to the Dr. Berg's Healthy Keto and Intermittent Fasting Podcast, where Dr. Berg takes you on the journey for the truth about getting healthy and losing healthy weight. Let's talk about the absolute best exercise for diabetes, as well as prediabetes and insulin resistance, okay, which is pretty much 60 to 70 percent of the population. Now, there's two types of exercise. You have aerobic and you have anaerobic. Aerobic means with oxygen and anaerobic means without oxygen. So aerobic exercise would be more slower type workouts like walking and yoga that you basically can talk to someone while you're exercising because you can breathe at the same time. Whereas anaerobic is without oxygen, so it's more high intense. It's shorter. It's more difficult to talk to someone while you're working out. So some examples of anaerobic exercise would be high intense, short bursts of exercise with a good amount of rest back and forth because you're tapping into certain energy sources from your muscles uh, to provide fuel. And apparently you don't need oxygen to have this happen. Like in your car, you have a carburetor, you have oxygen that's put in there with the fuel and it mixes with the spark plug. Well, when you run your body on an anaerobic system, you don't need oxygen. The problem is you can't go very far. So we have aerobic and we have anaerobic. Now with aerobic exercise, the first 20 minutes, you're burning up your stored glycogen, your stored sugar. And then after that, your body starts tapping into fat. But with anaerobic, you are burning your sugar, but you have this delayed effect with fat burning that occurs sometimes 24 to 48 hours later when you're sleeping. So which one is better for diabetes? It's the anaerobic type exercise, especially the high intensity interval training. And sprinting would fall in that category. Now the cool thing about anaerobic exercise is you don't have to do a lot of it to create the benefits. But the drawback is it's it's very uncomfortable and it's sometimes painful because you're putting more effort into it. But here are two huge advantages doing anaerobic exercise. And of course, I always recommend doing both because aerobic exercise is great for reducing stress and helping you sleep. But anaerobic exercise is the thing that will spike your growth hormone the most. And so using anaerobic exercise correctly, you can spike growth hormone by 700% more than you would if you did aerobic exercise. And growth hormone is the main fat burning hormone. It's the anti-aging hormone. It's the hormone that occurs when you're sleeping in the repair process. And based on the study that I'm going to put the link down below, you get an increase in insulin sensitivity by 23% more when you do anaerobic versus doing aerobic. So basically when you're doing anaerobic, you are improving your insulin connecting to the receptor. You're getting rid of your insulin resistance more than if you were doing lower type exercises. So if you're just starting keto and it's taking you a long time to adapt, or you're pre-diabetic, or you're a diabetic in type one or type two, or you have this big problem with your metabolism where it's really, really stuck, adding anaerobic exercise to your plan can speed things up. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below. Hey guys, I just want to let you know I have my new keto course just came out. It's a mini course. It covers all the basics and how to do it correctly. You can get through this in probably 20 minutes at the very most. So if you're interested, click the link below and get signed up now.